still show up for me? Will God still show up for me? You know, just like that uh, illustration that uh, uh, Jesus shared, that's where we took uh, the 11th hour miracle. You know, he went out by t- uh, the morning, then another three hours he still go out till 11th p.m. Where there's no hope again, but he met some people there. I said, Ah, what are you still doing here? Yeah, follow me. And he paid them, he still blessed them. I pray because we are here this morning, God will give us that 11th hour miracle in the name of Jesus. Will God still show up for me? Will God still show up concerning my case? We are still on that topic. And this morning, we'll be looking at the life of this man, Jehoshaphat. We'll be learning some lesson from his life, Jehoshaphat. We are going to be taking first, I mean, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-one uh, to four. Then we'll jump to twenty-seven to thirty. Hallelujah! Let's open our Bible, First Chronicles. Chapter 20, I mean, Second Chronicles, rather. Chapter 20, so take from 1 to 4, then 27 to 30. If you are there, you can be on your feet. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Hallelujah, it's on the screen already. And you can as well open your Bible. Hallelujah, let's take it one after the other, one to go. It happens. We are reading together. So let's read it. Eh? We are Christians. We are children of God. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and other with, the, uh, with them beside the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Uh-huh. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you. From beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Azazon, Tama, which is En Gedi. And Joseph had feared as human being, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Verse 4. So Judah gathered together to ask air from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Let's quickly go to that, uh, the end, uh, the later part, 27 to 30. Wow. To take time. Verse 27 to 30. Still on that uh, chapter 20. Verse 27 to 20. Okay. Then they returned, every man of Judah. And Jerusalem with Joseph at in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with what joy for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harp and trumpet to the house of the Lord. Verse 29. And the fear of God was on, on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Joseph was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. God shall give us rest all around in the name of Jesus. Let's have our seat. You know where we read, it's all about uh, this king, Joseph. You know, we are still on this topic with God still show up for me. You know, they are just, everything is going on smoothly. They are enjoying themselves until he had a call. That, ah, your excellency, sir. Hey, we just heard from our military intelligence that there are set of people. In fact, there are mighty nations. Three mighty nations. They are coming to wage war with your nation. They are coming to wage war with this nation. And what happened? Joseph was afraid as human being. He was afraid. Uh, ah, not at this time. Not at this time. He was afraid. Like so many Christians we do. When something that you are not expecting just happened. 
when what you are planning, you are already planning that this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to, and something suddenly just happened, and it's not your plan, and there's no how, you'll be afraid. As Joseph was afraid. But the next line of action of Joseph showed us that he knew that God will what? Will show up for him. God will show up for him. I wrote in my notes. Joseph didn't fold his arms and do nothing. When challenges arise, he did something about it. See, when challenges come, when you think that, ah, why am I going to do it? What is going to happen next? The next thing you need to do is what? Is to call on God. That verse, uh, I want to read. That's verse 5. And Joseph had stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our father, art thou not God in heaven and rulest not over all the kingdom of the earth in, and in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art thou not our God who had drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gaveth it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever, and they dwell therein, and have built their sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, if you read down, you see that after all, God show up for them. God show up for them. This is the first lesson. Joseph had Though he is, is the king of Israel with many resources at his disposal, but he decided to call on God for help first. When that challenges come, who do you call? You know, some Christians, we are so more, because of the resources that we have, the next thing we do, give me my phone. Many Christians do that. Ah, yeah, go and call this person for me. That's not the first thing to do. The first thing to do is what? Is to call on God. God, help me. God, help me. Joseph had armies too. He had other allies that you can call upon that, ah, let's get uh, ready for war. But he called on God of Israel. Who you call for help first? When you face with challenges, will determine whether God will show up for you. Who you call on God first? Who you call first? When challenges come, will determine whether God will show up for you. You see, some trust in chariot. Some trust in their resources. They trust in their intelligence. But see, at the end, there might be disappointments. But if you can trust in God, if you can call on God, you will see how God will show up. Look at what happened in the book of Mark chapter 5. From verse 25 to 26. talks about this woman with the issue of blood. She has been diagnosed that this thing, we don't know what to do. It just come, it just continues to come up now and then for a good 12 years. Bible said that she suffered so many uh, things in the hands of these physicians, but there's no improvement until she decides to call on God, until she decides to what? To take that step of faith. Don't just sit down and just, ah. God, are you not going to show up for me? Have you called him? Have you called him for help? He's not an intruder. Any situation that you don't call him to come and attend to, you, he is aware, but he'll just be looking at you. Whether you are going to call him or you are going to call that uncle or you are going to call that person that you have in mind to help you. When, you, when you're supposed to reach out to God over any situation and you refuse, such situation will continue to worsen. The situation that is supposed to call on God, God help me. God help me. Your Bible will say something that any Jaudeba There's some issues that will happen that you just look up, you look down, say, God help me. See, at that point, you are not supposed to be calling on anybody. The first person you're supposed to call is to call on God. Make God your number one 
option. Number two, make God your number one option. God is always interested in our case. When you humble yourself and you call upon him in prayer over any situation, it shows that we recognize his supremacy over our lives. When you call on him over any situation, you are telling God that God, I recognize your supremacy over my life. Who do you call when that challenges come? Who do you call? You are so much uh, familiar. Ah, let me just call this thing. Don't worry. I'll call my uncle. We'll fix it. I'll call this person. We'll fix that. And at the end of the day, we are even the one putting those people in danger. We are even the one putting them in danger. Because God expects us to look unto him. We are looking up unto that uncle. Ah, he will help me. It will sort my school fees. It will help me without my business. Ah, I, don't need, I don't need to do anything. I don't need to say, stress myself. He said, don't deal. Let me just get to him. He will say to it. And God will be looking at us that, ah, hey, and you are telling me to show up for you, but you are not calling me. Joseph had call on God. Joseph had call on God. Look at what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says. It said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. It's a pity that so many Christians nowadays, we are leaning on our own understanding. We don't consider God again. Maybe because of the knowledge that we have in books, because of our own intelligence, we think that, God, I can handle it. I can handle it. Yes, you can handle it. But at first... Call on him. The Lord help me. Don't think that you can help yourself. Don't think that you have all the capacity to do that thing. Just call on God. Even to the mind, to the minute something, call on him. The Lord help me concerning this. The, the pathway into the uh, season of laughter began when you begin to call on God. When you begin to ask him for his help, Joseph asked for help and God said, this battle is not your own. No. I will fight this battle for you. I will fight. Don't worry. Don't worry. You have called me. There's one song, When you call on him, there's nothing that is difficult for him to do. There's nothing. There's there's so many cases that you think that ah, is so simple, it's so easy, and God will be looking at hey, it's more than what you think. Even the doctor will say, Ah, this thing, eh? let's just be praying. But with God, all things are possible. What uh, Christians stand to lose when he puts God on number two in his life? When you stand to lose. When you put God on number two in your life. You know, you are trusting God that God show up for me. God show up for me. But in your mind, you are putting him as number two. You are putting him as last option. What do you stand to lose? Number one, such a Christian will experience delay and stagnation whenever he's being faced with challenges. When you put God as number two, such a person will experience what? Delay and stagnation. You know, the Bible says that there's a way that cement right in the eyes of the man. But at the end is what? It's destruction. You are looking at ah, this business is good. Ah, I'll just put in my money. Ah, this link is so sure. I'll just put in my resources. At the end of the day, it will end in what? In tears. Because you didn't seek God. Some Christians will just be sharing with ah, they duped me and they did something happened to her. Why? What happened? Did you ask Holy Spirit for help? Because I'm sure if you ask God for help, you will not find yourself in this condition. You stand to experience delay and stagnation when you make God your number two in your life. Another thing you stand to lose if you make God number two in your life you will lose grace capable of bringing you out of troubles. You lose what? Grace capable of bringing you out of troubles. That's what happened to, to King Asa. You know, he was 
sick. He, he has consulted physicians, maybe because he is the king, consulted physicians, but there's nothing. And he died in that condition. He died in that condition. Why? Because he refused to what? To call on God. That grace to capable of bringing him out of that sickness wasn't released to him. So don't make God number two. Even when you have the resources, even when you have that capacity, don't make God number two. Call on God. You know, uh, Peter, uh, book of Peter said he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. That humility means you love to call on him. At any point in time, you love to call on God. You recognize his authority over your life. That Lord, you are the one that can help me. See, when you have the proud heart, that's when you say, ah, doesn't matter. Even when the instruction is coming out, do this, do that. I know what to do. That grace, capable of making you to come out of that trouble, will not be released because you have made God number two. The third thing you start to lose when you make God number two in your life, you lose out of the plan of God for your life. When you make God number two, you lose out of his plan. God had planned to give even uh, ben Haddad, King Syria, to King Asa. But Asa didn't see that because he already depending on what? On ben Haddad to help him in that battle. Even the person that you, you, you are leaning on, you are thinking, ah, this person will help you. God is even, he, God wants that person to also be what? To also be your ally. But because you are so proud, you don't lean on God. That's why that King Asa, I mean, King Asa went astray. So these are the three things you stand to lose when you make God number two in your life. Number one is what? Such a Christian will experience what? Delay and stagnation. Number two, the grace capable for bringing him out of trouble will not be released unto him. And the third one, such a Christian will what? Will lose out of the plan of God for his life. I pray we will not lose out of God for our life in the name of Jesus. Now let's look at the second lesson. The first lesson is we should always call on God whenever we are faced with any uh, challenges. Second lesson. We are still taking it from uh, 2 Chronicles 20, 15 to 18. 15 to 18. And he said, Aken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Josaphat, thus say the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them, Behold, they come up uh, by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerel. Ye shall not need to fight in the battle, said yourself. Stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And verse 18. And Joseph had bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. The second lesson here is that your faith in God is revealed when you believe God's word over any situation and obey the instruction is given unto you. Your faith in God is revealed when you believe God's word over any situation and obey his instruction concerning that uh, situation, how do you show that you have faith when you believe God's word? God said it is settled and you believe. God said the battle is not yours, it's mine and you believe. It shows that you have faith. You are not trying to help yourself. Joseph believed completely. He believed and the instruction therein, he carried them out. Your faith will not produce victory for you 
if you are walking in disobedience to God's instruction, do you want God to show up for you? Make your faith eh? uh, allow, walk in obedience so that your faith can produce what? Can produce victory for you. When you are walking in disobedience, there's no how God can show up for you. When you are walking in line with your own plan, there's no how God can show up for you. Your faith in God's word matters a lot. There are some situations that you have been trusting God for. You have been praying in your closet and God said, I've settled it. I've settled it. I've settled that condition, uh, that issue. Just believe. The reason why we are not seeing God is because we are not believing him. We are still doubting that, ah, but he has said it now that I am healed. Why is, why is it that I am still feeling the pain at this part of my body? Why is it that I am still feeling pain at this side of my body? But God has said, I have what? I have healed you. How do you treasure the word of the Lord? Whether the one uh, you cut yourself from the word of God or the one that came from the servant of God. Your faith in God is revealed when you believe God's word over that condition and you obey the instruction given unto you. If you believe and you don't obey, you can't see God. If you believe and you don't obey, look at those people, those servants. The mother of Jesus told them that whatever he asks you to do, make sure you do it. And Jesus said, okay, just go and fill the pots. Just go and fill the pot. And they filled all the 12 uh, pots. He said, have, we have done that. Take some. Go and give it to the chairman of the ceremony. And they did that. To me, I was, when I was reading that part, I was like, ah, in that John 2, who actually uh, did uh, make the miracle to come to pass? Who? Is it Jesus? Who? Is the servant. Because they believe. They believe if they are doubting. Oh, <laughs> hey, Monsieur, hey, look at him. He said we should take water. Now water now. They took some of the water and they go and give the MC. And they, ah, this is the best wine we have ever tasted. This is the best wine I have ever, ever tasted. See, when you believe, you shall see the best from God. God will show up because you believe and you carry out his instruction. Joseph would not have uh, seen uh, God's intervention if he had been arguing with God. That God, you don't understand. Three mighty nations are coming. Three mighty nations are coming. And you say that we should not fight. We should just go there and be singing songs. So many Christians, we are arguing with God. We are arguing with God in our hearts. We are telling God that God, can't you see my condition? I'm not qualified for this job. Yet you say, as you put in my quotation, as you put in my CV, I'm not qualified. They say they have, they, they, they need uh, 10 years experience. Me, I'm just a fresh graduate. I, ah, and God said, go there, they will pick you. Stop arguing with God. Just believe. Just believe. Once God has spoken over such situation of your life, believe him wholeheartedly. Believe him. In that same uh, Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20, look at what it says. Believe in the Lord your God, so ye shall what? Be established. Believe in the Lord your God. What has God said concerning you? What has God told you this year? That you are still thinking, ah, just seven days. Seven days. Ah, show my shelesha. Show my hapusha. It's not over if you can believe God. If you can hold on to God, you will see him showing up for you. Your miracle is waiting for your prompt response to God's instruction before it will manifest. Stop arguing with God. Tell your neighbor, stop arguing with God. And start obeying God. Start obeying God. I told someone that if God can start with Father Abraham at age 75. I'm not 75. And uh, thank God for the grace of God. I have no God. I have, with God, I have discovered my purpose. I know God is taking me somewhere. At age 75, God started with him. And look at his testimony. 
at Genesis chapter 24, verse 1, it said, And God blessed Abraham in all things. So just believe God. Just believe Him. If God have declared over you that it is well, just believe that it is well. No matter what people are saying, just ignore them. Believe the word of God. So many Christians, we believe what people are saying rather than believing what God is saying. We believe the uh, people's conclusion over our case rather than believing what God is saying over that case. So, uh, they say that I cannot have this. They say I cannot have that. They say my age, age is against me. Who said so? Who said so? Who said so? You had uh, the testimony of uh, Reverend uh, Abraham. He said, at 4 o'clock, bank have closed. The PA said, ah, sir, bank have closed. So he said, where is it within the Bible? So let's go there. And they got there. And that thing they want to do, they achieve it. If you believe God, he will show up for you. He said, hey, those that believe God, what will happen? They will see God. Your miracle is waiting for your prompt response to God's instruction. Stop arguing with God. Stop doubting God. It remains few days to end the year. Yes. But if you can in, put yourself, position yourself well. See, God is still sharing the miracle. He's still raining down that blessing, that miracle. There's some, that, that's some, you know, that's some goal at the dying minutes. When that goal, when that striker just striking that ball. And the way go. Maybe just like uh, two minutes to the end of the game. What will happen? The whole stadium will scatter. Just because that goal came in at a few minutes to the end of the game. And that's the winning goal. See, some of us, we are waiting for that winning goal. For that miracle. And I declare upon our life, that miracle, God shall perform it before the end of this year in the name of Jesus. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up. The game is not yet over. The year is not yet over. That winning goal, that winning, that miracle, that testimony can still be achieved. If only you can believe God. If only you can believe God. Stop doubting. If you read through, you see that Joseph had believed God. He didn't fight in that battle. He didn't even raise any sword. The Bible said that they help in what? In destroying themselves. Instead of them to be the one carrying spears, carrying uh, sword, just go with your musical instruments. I will let them to what? To destroy themselves. You believe that, ah, there's one enemy somewhere for the, the disturbing your life. There's one battle somewhere disturbing your life. Just believe. God said that he has what? He has conquered it. Just believe. Don't, any, don't allow anyone to threaten you. Don't allow any situation to give you concern to the point that you now be thinking, ah, God, God, and what me, honey? Just be confident in God. That God, I know it is settled. Because I'm waiting upon you, I know you will show up for me. Let's go to uh, Psalm 40, from verse 1. Psalm 40, from verse 1. Let's look at the testimony of, uh, of David. Psalm 40, verse 1. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He's not waiting for any man. He said, he is waiting patiently for the Lord. Where? In the place of prayer. In the place of what? In the place of worship. He's busy waiting on God that God show up for me. God said to me, said to me maritally, said to me in my academics, said to me in my business, said to me in my health, said to me in this, said to me in that. He's busy waiting patiently for the Lord and inclined unto me. And incline unto me. Which means that if you have not been waiting patiently before God, there's no how that God will incline his ears unto you. Look at the verse 2. He said, He brought me and he heard my cry. He brought me out of what? My clay. He showed up for me. He brought me out of what? My clay. And set my feet upon a rock and established my feet. 
Don't forget in verse 1, he waited patiently for the Lord and God showed up for him. See, wait for the Lord. Cool down, calm down. Don't allow all the gra gra that people are asking you. They'll be asking you questions. How far now? When are you going to give us that IV? When are you going to give us that testimony? We are waiting. We are waiting. Just tell them, I'm waiting patiently for the Lord. And I know he will not disappoint me. Look at verse 3. And he had put a new song in my mouth. And praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear I shall trust in the Lord. I pray for us that the blessing of the Lord, that people shall see and trust in the Lord. God shall release it over our lives in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, wait patiently before the Lord. Mark on you, He will show up for you. Mark on you, There's nothing you can try, you can only try. But make sure that as you are trying, you are still in the plan of God. If you are trying outside the plan of God, it will not give you the results. But if you are trying, you are taking steps in the plan of the Lord, then you will have the results. If it's not the Lord, there's nothing that you can show forth. There's nothing that you can call, ah, this is what God, it will surely end up in disappointment. That's why you must wait patiently before the Lord. David waited and what happened to him in verse 3, he uh, God came through for him. He said, Blessed is the man, is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Even when you think that is delaying, you still make the Lord your trust. Even when you think that, ah, it's like God is not showing up. Oh, ah, let me quickly help myself. That's what happened to Saul. He thought that uh, 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 Samuel is not coming. Let me quickly do the sacrifice. Let me quickly do the sacrifice. And he lost out. He said, ah, if you have waited, this your kingdom will have been what? Established forever. You know, what is your hotel? What is your hotel? And Samuel has been taciding. Ah, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon this person. Maybe he has been taciding. And uh, let me even just go there and go and please learn to wait. Learn to wait. God is still the business of blessing his people. But if you are not patient enough, he will not show up. If you are not patient for him, he will not what? He will not show up. Let's wait for him. If there's one thing you must hold in this message, don't be what? Don't be hasty when you are expecting God. That's the lesson I want every one of us to go home with. Don't be hasty when you are waiting for the Lord. It won't show up according to your own time. It will show up according to his time. And that time, you don't know. That time, you don't know. So, don't be hasty when you are dealing with God. Topolabi said, Atoron, Konlowo, Lua, Kojekini, Konkonju, you just have to calm down. God is coming. He will surely come. I know he will surely come. Hallelujah. 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 In conclusion, we got this show for you. I need your answer. We got this show for you. Yes, he will surely show up. Is even showing up. It's even showing up. And I will surely wait until he show up for me. Because I want to have testimony like that, David, in that uh, Psalm 40. That me too, I will say, ah, praise the Lord, church. I waited patiently for this miracle, oh, and God show up for me. Rise up on your feet. 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 Begin to talk to God, the Lord. I will wait. Tell God this morning, the Lord, I will wait. Tell him, the Lord, I will wait. Tell him, the Lord, I will wait for my change to come. Begin to talk to God, the Lord, show up for me. Open your mouth and turn to pray, the Lord, show up for me. As I'm waiting for you, oh God, show up for me. 
the Lord show up for me concerning this issue of my life. The Lord show up for me. Hope your man are turning to prayer. Talk to God. Talk to God. The Lord, before the end of this year, Lord show up for me. I want my testimony to be mega. I want that testimony to be massive. The Lord show up for me. Show up for me. I know that you cannot come late. You cannot come late. They will think that yeah, God came late, but he is coming big. Hope your man are turning to prayer. The Lord show up for me. Come true love for me. Concerning this issue of my life, you mention it in prayer. The Lord come true for me. Come true love for me and give me that testimony. Give him that testimony. Give me that testimony. As I'll be coming next week Sunday for that annual thanksgiving. The Lord, let that testimony be given unto me. Let that issue be solved completely. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. The Lord, as I go into this week, the Lord said to me, Oh God, said to me, Oh God, with divine surprises. Said to me, Oh God, with pleasant surprises in the name of Jesus. People have been asking questions. They have been asking that when, when the Lord give him Give me that answer. Give me that miracle that will silence my mockers. Give me that miracle that will silence my mockers in the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mother's name, we are praying. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We are blessed. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats briefly.